Uh, this is Chris from Deus Ex Machina, and we are down to our last few minutes <clears throat> of a Naramata, a game of wine and a tourism. And um, we are down to 42 minutes left. We had, a, of course, like most uh, Kickstarter campaigns, we had a huge surge in the uh, last day or two. We are up to 202 backers. And, uh, you know, it looks like we're not going to be hitting 30, but, you know, th things can happen. But uh, we did get through our first stretch goal, which will include the uh, Naramata manual. And uh, we're going to be keeping track of this uh, last few minutes. And if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, post them in any of the uh, chats or windows, and I will answer uh, to the best of my ability. Um, if there's any uh, backers that pop up, I will I will know. I have a version of the game right now running on Tabletopia. This is the same version we ran a couple days ago. And uh, if anyone wants to get on the stream that uh, thinks they can contribute, uh, let me know, and I will bring you on to the chat. I'm trying to get a few people to come on right now, uh, like uh, my partner in this, Norm, who's kind of been this silent background guy who uh, a lot of people know. And... Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, throw them up on the on the chat. Um, uh, I'm looking at the at the game now, and 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 we've talked about this version a lot. And a couple of things I'll, I'll go I'll go over. Obviously, the vehicles. Uh, you know, we have only one vehicle that's finished, the uh, Hummer, and we have the white Evo, and then we have the uh, blue Volkswagen and the red uh, Jeep. There's another vehicle that's not shown here, which is the uh, silver Tesla. The uh, the next vehicle, if we had gotten the thirty thousand, we had we had a uh, three other vehicles already planned down. I think the other one would have been probably the purple uh, Econo line van, the nineteen uh, seventies style with the crushed velvet and the airbrush paint and so forth. That would have been fun. That would have been fun to have that one. And uh, the, the, these designs aren't going away. Uh, since we, since, so, since we are funded, we will be doing an expansion uh, sometime probably next year after the first game delivers. Um, it's probably going to be about, uh, probably about, probably going to cover a Soyuz and potentially maybe Niagara, depending on, um, you know, who's interested and so forth. There's been talk about Napa. We'll see about uh, doing that. Uh, well, something like that would happen. We would only include it as uh, just, it's a new map. Basically, it's a new map. When we see this here from, from left to right, this is the Naramata region. Starts in Penticton from these two different spots. And this is trying to be as geographically faithful as possible. There are splits. And we've, we've got, gone into detail how uh, kind, of, kind of inaccurate <laughs> this uh, this map is. Like I said, there's a, a two-kilometer stretch that's cut out about here, right? Um, this road here is not 100% accurate, accurate because what, what, what this actually is is one road doing this and another road doing this. So we kind of cut out this road and moved this road to here. So it looks like that. But there's basically these two long looping roads. And um, this road here is actually huge. There's actually two of these. There's actually one here and then one here. Uh, but we couldn't get any of these wineries on board. So there's just this one location. But there's actually a couple wineries over here as well. And uh, But this is a relatively faithful. And this is, of course, going into Naramada. This actually uh, could be... Uh, assumed to be several locations. There's uh, some Airbnbs and some inns in Naramata, so this can be consumed. That is also a really nice um, a deli in Naramata as well. Which, if I was to put a location, I'd put the deli because that's where that's where I usually stop in, in Naramata. Um, so if you look at this from the arrangement of uh, of the Soyuz, and um, then a Soyuz, of course. For one thing, Naramata is it, it kind of runs a little vertically. So obviously this map is going horizontally. Uh Soyuz would be the same thing. The Soyuz uh would look like it's going left to right, but it's actually going bottom to top. And so if we were to say the start would be in a Soyuz, we'd start about here. And it would be a single location, because there's only a single starting location, which would be a Soyuz. And we would start with a single starting location and we would uh, go for a couple places, and, and I'm just going to make a couple of assumptions. I'm not saying we're going to have these wineries on board, but if we, if we if we were to, it was it would start sometime here. Um, my first guess would be Incameep. It may actually start at a at a winery, which would be an interesting idea to have a starting location that where you can immediately get a f uh, kind of a free starting look starting uh, asset, and that's an interesting idea. Just 
I just thought of it. It would be a really cool idea. So you, you can start income meet, get free assets right from the get go. And then you'd land, go to, um, question I'm trying to remember now. I'm doing, I'm usually pretty good at remembering the wineries. And I want to say moon cursor and you hit Mo moon cursor and a few others, and you're actually going through a Soyuz at this point. So there'd be a single stretch. And then once you get out of there, we see about three or four wineries in a single line, and that could be a uh, border town, uh, and, and a few others. And then there's a certain point where the road splits. Now, it does split, but it's not going to split visually as, as as it would here. Here, it would be an even split. It would be one road doing this and then one road doing this. And these two roads would run parallel. So this loop here would actually be a complete loop all the way in. Now, that doesn't mean the fact that once you commit to a path, you're never going to be able to go to the, to the other path. Uh, there would be roads that would connect. So you would go to this loop, and then you could come down to this loop here and then move up to this loop. But there would always be two very long roads. And that's a very distinct difference, um, both mechanically and visually as well. And of course, the bottom route you'd have, uh, which would be kind of the eastern side, you would have, you know, burrowing owl. And I want to say, whew, this is gonna be tough. Um, Desert Hills, Black Hills, uh, Silver Sage, and a whole bunch of others. And then this side here, you would have something like Gold Hill, uh, Kismet, uh, maybe Hester Creek, Geringer Brothers, um, a Tin Horn Creek, and a bunch of others. There's, like I said, there's probably more wineries in the Osoyoos Oliver region than there are in Naramata. Uh, but the area is also much more spread out. And, um, you know, you could easily, I think you can easily, uh, yeah, it, I'm say easy. We, we got 26 wineries in Naramata. And, um, Checking the comments here. Cool. Um, and it was uh, a very interesting process. Like I said, we originally, that this is, I, I mean, I can name most of these wineries here. There's th three sisters and there's Ruby, uh, Ruby Blues. And this I want to say is, ooh, is that Moraine or is that Moraine? I think that's Westbird and that's Moraine. I know that's Deep Roots and Serendipity. And then we have Nickel over here. This was supposed to be uh, Perseus, but Perseus unfortunately no longer exists. And so that's one of two wineries I hear that's fictional. That's Ex Machina. And then uh, this one winery kind of dropped out the last second. So it got replaced with a winery called um, Manahan Estate, which is named after uh, uh, Norm's uh, wife's uh, maiden name. So that's the little location right there. So um, one of the things we, we, we kind of wanted to um, do was um, get some other ideas we had is, is you know, getting labels for these bottles and a few other things. There's, there was actually uh, quite a few stretch goals. And one of the things I probably will do is fold a lot of those stretch goals into the next project. So with if we do the Anasoyus expansion, uh, we would include all the other card designs. So if we had, um, we had another five or six, four or five, I think it's four or five uh, vehicles for our characters. There was a Range Rover. There was a G-Wagon, which I admit did look a, a bit similar. I mentioned we had the Econo line. There was a yellow uh, Lamborghini uh, SUV. No, not Lamborghini, but Lamborghini SUV. And was there another? Was there another, 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 another Tesla? That could have been all I designed. Somebody... I was making a joke with Jason Bold about putting a DeLorean in there, but whenever someone mentions like putting a sports car, we always have to remember the fact that how many uh, tourists are you going to be taking on board? Like I said, um, the yellow, uh, the white car on its own has already got the rule where it can only carry three, where everyone else can carry um, a full four. So uh, there was uh, another option we had, uh, which were these um, cards, and these cards would have. A bunch of wineries uh, that you would need to um, it was, it was kind of like uh, they were like daily goals so you would draw a card from this daily goal and it would have a list of nine wineries and you would put one of these uh, favorite tokens on this card if you visited that winery on that day and then you would put that aside and at the end of four days you got to pick or, or three days or two days depending on how many 
days you ran the game, you could pick one of those cards and claim them from points. You'd get one point per winery. So this was one way of getting an extra seven or eight uh, or nine points. Now, of course, the chances of you being able to visit all of those specific wineries would be slim to none. So you would probably get five or six points, uh, depending on that. Or it could be two points each. You could be able to get uh, 10 points. And you would do that every single time, and you would run. And, of course, the moment you, uh, you would go from day two to day three, um, if on day two you uh, had already earned uh, a card that was more points than day one, then you could just get rid of the day one card because you would obviously trade in the day two card. The other thing we had was, uh, was something called a day two option. The day two option... Um, which also an, was an alternative way of doing the um, two-player version. Uh, the, or the two-player version has a phantom player, and the phantom player, um, um, the way it worked is that you would, in the current, the current version of the two-player option, you would uh, you actually have a phantom player that has a phantom meeple here, and you would move this vehicle across. He's not doing any assets. You're not tracking his points or anything like that, not doing anything stupid like that, but you, but he is doing actions. He always goes um, th he always goes before everybody else, but after that, he follows the time tracker. So he, he you always pick the innermost option. You roll the, um, the die. Where is the die hiding here? Oh, there it is. You would roll the die. And then if it came up as one, you would move him up one, and you would use the innermost uh, location. So that's in this case, you, you could pick the cheese here, for example. And uh, and then he would go up a half hour, and then you would go accordingly. So thank you, uh, Demon of Van 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 Deeren Doc V O F. For pledging a retail pledge. That's very nice of you. That took us over 27. We're at 27114. Thank you very much. Um, I imagine, I'm going to imagine this gentleman was probably from Belgium because he was asking me about uh, about that. Well, thank you very much, sir. Great shout out for that. And if anyone else does a little late pledge, we'll talk about that as well. We're at 30 minutes. We're exactly 30 minutes to go. Uh, I'll keep the you know chatting best i can i was kind of hoping on getting a few people up it looks like the people i invited aren't uh, looking at their messages which is too bad anyway so uh the way the day two card worked the day two had a list of wineries similar to the daily goal and i would have to test to see if those could be one and the same but it would give you a, a set number of of locations a set number of wineries and you would put lock tokens on those so you wouldn't have to bother you know, rolling the die, moving the time meeple, moving the guy, you would just simply put out tokens and call it a day. Now, the day two option, which uses the exact same deck of cards, has you starting on day two instead of uh, day one. And you would draw one of these cards for each player and you would put lock tokens out. So you would be, you would be starting the game already at day two with a whole bunch of these options locked off. Players could then remove a bunch of tokens as if they were starting on day two, and then you would start the game for the first time on day two. You would gain a certain number of resources, probably maybe 10, uh, 10 additional uh, prestige, and you would start on day two. This is a very interesting thing because it basically it removes that kind of, I wouldn't say slow, but the, the day one kind of all starts the same. You're getting a few, very few um, a tourists. You're trying to gain resources. Hopefully, you're smart getting a few of these cards. And then, and you get to day two and day three. That's when your that's when your unique strategy starts to carry in as you get more of these cards, right? So, for example, let's, we'll draw we'll draw a few cards here now. So, for example, let's say uh, somebody grabbed this card on um, in the day two option. You know that you're starting the game moving towards the strategy of um, of going with the view because the, this is this is a, a real. Uh, bonus to the uh, view. Um, oddly enough, last time we played, uh, this guy never showed up. Uh, that's a really cool card because it allows you to go into the end day, in the end time here at six o'clock here. Um, other things we're thinking of including that. Obviously, we're going to have signature wineries in in the Soyuz board as well. And personally, I think I'd like rather keep it at this level. I think six would be really good. I think using the same colors would obviously be very very efficient. Um, that being said, we might change it up. That being said, we want to have contrasting colors. And because we want to have contrasting colors, uh, we may not be able to do that. 
like we could have a black and then a gray, but then, you know, if you have to separate them, it may be difficult to, 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 to the tell apart the black to the white. If we do contrast in colors, one of the things we wanted to do is actually have stickers and st apply stickers to these things. And then if you, if we have different bottles in the Asoys expansion, then you can label those bottles and then label, and then we'll include the stickers for Naramata. So you can retroactively apply the stickers to this one as well. Now with Asoyus, we probably wouldn't do cheese though. Um, I, like Naramata actually does have cheesemongers. Oh, thank you, uh, John Bacchetto for pledging $75. And uh, very much appreciated of you. What uh, puts us to 204 backers and 27, 189 and at 27 minutes left over. Yeah, this happens. I it, it, with, um, um, what was I going to say? The, uh, uh, with ultra modern in 2019, we were, we were getting backers fast and furious all the way to the end. Uh, Soyuz wouldn't have cheese. Uh, Naramata does actually have cheese mongers, Poplar Grove cheese, which have been a big supporter, which are right here. They're right here. And there's a lot of places that sell Upper Bench. Upper Bench sells cheese. And so the cheese has been, uh, has kind of an aspect of this area. Um, but uh, uh, Soyuz, I never really thought of the being hardcore cheese people. If we ever did a game for the northern area, like say Northern Carlona, uh, there, would, there would be a lot of cheese. Now we would never do one for the for the area north of Kelowna. There's not enough wineries there. Um, that's where we went on our honeymoon. We went to the nord northern region, the north north of Kelowna, to uh, Shushwap and um, Vernon and Armstrong. And Armstrong is very well known for uh, its cheese. Although the the cheese name, the company Armstrong, no longer works out of Armstrong. There's still a lot of cheese vendors there. Very very wonderful place to visit. And I still have a freezer, oh, sorry, fridge full of cheese from that uh, place. But we wouldn't do that region because there's just not enough wineries. There's only like nine wineries up there. So, you, so we would probably do fruit. There's a lot of orchids there, uh, a lot of um, farmers there for doing that. So we probably do fruit. There's also f just a lot of fruit vendors, a lot of farmers markets off the side of the road. You can stop and get that. So that would be another option. Uh, one way of doing that would be to... Uh, um, you could have, we could even get uh, a fruit vendor on board and like the Poplar Grove, you would just have two fruit. And so we would probably have an apple symbol. Mechanically, it would work basically exactly the same as cheese. We're just graphically going to be changing the visual look, but the rules would basically function the same. Um, that area, this all it also has some great views. So we'll probably run off the views. Now, you, you, we, we, you know, with this, with the, so you the map, we, we don't want to play too much with, um, with altering and, and changing the game, like we, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm not terribly interested in, in adding a, a whole new mechanic because the changing of the map is going to have itself its own value. The idea of of having free assets at the beginning, having an end, so the beginning of a Soyuz end an Oliver, uh, and then you would have vendors along the way. And we could also play with the mechanic. We've been talking about uh, an, an end game mini game that happens, but we, we also could have a, a starting mini game as well. So. It, those are options we were thinking of. Um, but to have a completely different asset, the thing about these systems, there's, there's only a few ways you can do it. I mean, one way of doing it is rolling di rolling a die, which we do. We have uh, two types of set collection and then uh, the purchase, which is not a set collection. But it's a way of basically paying to get points. And there aren't a lot of other ways you can do that. Oh, uh, thank you, Angela, for your tourist pledge. Uh, that was absolutely much appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, that puts us to 206 backers and at a surprising uh, 27, uh, 539, which is uh, really, really appreciated. Um, the um, If we were to do, now, if we were to do uh, Okanagan Falls, Okanagan Falls was a bit different. I don't know if there are enough wineries in Okanagan Falls, honestly, because we usually... You know, if if there are 40 wineries and 26 come on board, we have to imagine the 60 to 70 percent, you know, kind of uh, compliance about. So if there's 40, if there's 100 wineries, we could get maybe 60, 70 uh, interested in coming on board. So I don't know if Okanagan Falls has enough. We would probably have to get every winery on there. It's interesting too because uh, you know o o Okanagan Falls. Once again, some of you guys aren't from BC. Uh, Okanagan Falls. Oh, uh, and as as I said, or whenever I mention these regions of wine country, you always have to remember that that wine country is one large wine country. So when I say a Soyuz wine country, and then we go to Naramata, this is all in the same region. This is all in the Okanagan. It would start with a Soyuz, 
go to Oliver, and then from Oliver to Okanagan Falls, Okanagan Falls to Penticton, Penticton to Kelowna. So these were the regions. And originally, when we first assigned the game, it was the entire region. So you had that. But it also felt similar to, to Takedo, because Takedo has a section of road and then a place where you stop for the day, a section of road and you stop for the day, and a section of road you stop for the day. And this worked the same way. It was, you'd go Oliver, uh, so you go to Oliver, stop for the day, go to Okanagan Falls, stop for the day, go to uh, Naramata, Petitin, stop for the day, and then you'd end the game at Kelowna. And I was, that was a bit too much like Takedo. And uh, I like calling the game Naramata because I felt that that rolled off the tongue, but I would, couldn't call a game Naramata if Naramata is only one little section. I probably could, but, you know, whatever. So what we ended up doing is uh, cutting it down to just Naramata and then calling it Naramata. Um, so Okanagan Falls. So if this is the Soyuz map and you had a Soyuz starting here, which is 20 minutes from the border to Washington State, you would go to this area here, which is... Um, uh, Oliver, and then the Okanagan Falls map. Okanagan Falls would start here and it would end with Penticton on this side, which of course is the beginning of this map right here. The thing about the, um, if you were to do this one justice, you would actually have two very distant starting areas. Oh, there's uh, Norm's popping online here. We're going to put them on. Hey, dude. Hello. Hey, man. I see you. You're on. You're, you're live. I, you. I can. I can see you. Where is it's working? Okay, I'm on here. Yeah, you're on. You're oh, on, dude. I totally slept in this morning. <laughs> I was just uh, talking to people um, about potentially what we would do with uh, an Osoyoos expansion with our next uh, launch. Nice, because when you because yeah. you, we can do uh, another Naromatic Kickstarter, but you have to have something new to it. So you can do another Naromatic Kickstarter, say in eight months, but you have to include something. So in this situation, we would be including a. Um, the Soyuz expansion and or Niagara expansion. I was just talking about some of the ideas that we were thinking of having. And um, I was saying that uh, if we were to do Okanagan Falls, uh, also the, Oso the Osoyoos expansion, you would have one starting location, which would be Osoyoos, right? And then an ending location, which would be Oliver. So unlike this game where you had two starting locations, you'd have one and one. But there would be a stretch of, I imagine the starting location, and I'm just saying, I'm just spitting out ideas. The starting location could be Incameep, Right, that'd be awesome. Uh, which, yeah, exactly. But that would be interesting too, because that would be a, an actual set look, a set starting location. So there would be somewhat of a mini game set just for that, and then the road would split into two roads. And now you know, you know, a Soyuz, I know a Soyuz, but there's basically two parallel roads. And on one parallel road, you have Burrowing Owl, you have a Platinum Bench, you have Silver Sage, and then the other road, you would have Gold Hill, uh, Tin Horn Creek, Garinger Brothers, Hester Creek, and there's more than enough wineries to fill up that area. Um, but you would have these two parallel roads running across the map and you could jump from one road to another. There, there would be branching roads because there are in real life. And if we were to do, if it, Okanagan Falls, it would be a bit, bit trickier because you would have, it would be somewhat H shaped because Okanagan Falls would actually be dead center. And then you have some places like Nighthawk and uh, see you later. And then you would have on the other side, you'd have uh, stuff like, uh, Ooh, uh, geez, uh, Oh, I'm running. I'm, I'm running a blank here. I know that Platinum Bench, um, Blasted Church, Crescent Hill are are, are, are in this region. Um, we probably have to make up a few wineries because on this side you just have uh, two wineries, including um, Nicole's favorite, which is Crazy Legs. Kelowna would be very would be very very similar because you have a bunch of wineries on the east side, a bunch of wineries on the west side, and not much in between. Um, Niagara. Which is uh, which I actually checked does actually have a single long stretch, and I think the falls are about here, and then there's a big water feature right about there. So Niagara could fit in. Have you been to Napa? Me? Yeah. No, never, man. Do you, do you know anyone who has? I think I. I feel like Candace has, but uh, not me. I know Sonica like a few times. I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, my sister has. So they, they, did anyone ever tell you about how it's set up? Is it is it a straight road or is it just a scatter shot or? I don't know. I think it's a lot bigger region than 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 this, right? So I'm not sure. Well, it depends on on, on how you look at it because if you look up the entirety of Okanagan Wine Country, I think Okanagan Wine Country is, itself is bigger than Napa, but Napa is bigger than Naramata, absolutely. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. for sure. Someone was, someone sent a message to me asking about whether or not we would we would do one of uh, to showcase Vancouver Island, and I was just like, sure. Except there's only like eight wineries on Vancouver Island. We couldn't make a game out of that. <laughs> what wineries uh, are on Vancouver Island? Uh, there's actually a few. Um, hey, do you remember uh, when you did the Northern Taste? The last time you did Northern Taste, you had a you had a wine tasting room in the oh, upper yeah. level. Yeah. Right. And there was a guy, there were guys there doing, doing wine tastings. The wine, the wines they were offering were from Vancouver Island. Or at least one mm. of them was. I'm trying to think of who it was though. Yeah. I can't remember the name either, but yeah, there are definitely uh, wineries in Vancouver Island. Um, by the way, I, I don't know if you've uh, been following up until now. We actually got uh, a tourist pledge and another, another retail pledge. Oh, wow. While, while we've been talking. So we've been doing, um, it, it, it's been actually pretty nice here. We're at 113% and 27,539. Nice. So, That's awesome, yeah. man. Very yeah, cool. the last hour generally has stuff like that. We're at 17 minutes left. Still have time for people to uh, squeeze in uh, a couple uh, final backers. Um, definitely been a very interesting uh, month, wouldn't you say? Oh, man. It sure has been. It's like interesting that we're uh, we're follow or we're we're concluding on Christmas Eve, right? So because this is a gift to the world, gift to the world. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. The other what was the other region? Um, the other other region that would be in BC would be probably Vancouver, which I which technically is Langley. The only issue with regions like that, and this is what I worry about Napa, because I I've been looking at Napa region. Is that Langley is a big, big flat space, and so whenever you have a big flat space, roads have a tendency of being parallel, kind of like a grid shaped, and because of that, the wineries are kind of scattered across this grid pattern. That doesn't re that's not really conductive to a um, uh, to an uh, to a game board. The thing about Naramata, which I liked, was was because it's a single straight path. And the reason why I like Osoyoos and Niagara is because they're a straight path. There's a, there's a single road or two roads that you can play with. So we'd have to take a look at Napa. But of course, we'd have to have to travel to Napa. I think. Yeah. Not not that we need to, but I think it's <laughs> got to man. Got to. That's a, that's a deal breaker for sure. Well, for me, like Nicole and I, like on our honeymoon we were thinking of taking a cruise. We were thinking of going to California. And then of course we end up going to salmon arm. Uh, so it's not really a huge shift, <laughs> but um, it was fascinating seeing the nine wineries that are there and then seeing the very unique varietals that are, it, it, it felt like a completely different wine country than Kelowna, which felt like a completely different wine country to a Soyuz, it was just fascinating because they're only like 600 kilometers apart from each other to have completely different varietals, mm -hmm. completely different uh, kind of geography. And there's way more cheese in that area. Yeah. Uh, so it would be interesting to, to look at Niagara and look at Napa or even look at places in Europe and see what unique aspects would be there. Yeah, man. I'm like, it's um, to me, it, it would be really, really cool to see what the what the the games look like. If you did so say, we, here's Nermata, then there's beside that is Napa and and, you know, like further than that is Niagara. Um, it would be really, really cool to just like, you know, a, a couple years from now, sit down and just look at them side by side by side. It would be pretty, pretty remarkable. Yeah, like I said, one of the things with the Osoyoos map I wanted to play with is to take out cheese and replace it with fruit, right? And oh, if, yeah, we were yeah. do, if we were to do Napa, because the Osoyoos one would just be an alternate map. There wouldn't be much. I wanted to play with, because there's a, basically, thematic similarity to this is a game called, um, oh, boy, uh, Flashpoint. Flashpoint Fire Rescue. Now, Flashpoint Fire Rescue is a cooperative game similar to Pandemic, where players are assuming the roles of firefighters. And you're trying to get into a building and rescue people. Now, the random elements are where the fire is, where the fire spreads, and where the people are, and where these random explosive elements of the game are located. And the, the expansions were all different maps. So there's a basic 
uh, there's a two sided board that came with the game, but there was a, a submarine, an office building, uh, a um, a car shop, and so they they put out a four or five different maps, which greatly affected the game. Now, and some games do this, so that's what, one of the things we would be doing that we would be doing alternate maps, which don't really add many new rules, but they're, they're because it's a different map. There's a different variation of things to do, but eventually, if we ended up going to Napa, I would want to play around and see about new mechanics about you know it, it's still going to be thematically the same game you're still going to be trying to um um satisfy tourists but there would be a slight difference in um how you would get those points is there a way to connect like say so with a, a additional editions of the game is there a way to connect them so that like say you're playing it and the say naramata flows into like you could do like one day in Naramata, then it flows into one day in Napa, then it flows into, so it's almost like a global kind of thing. So that is a fantastic question. Now I, I, I had mentioned uh, early in the stream that originally this game was the entire Okanagan. So if you look at this map, it would be uh, Soyuz to Okanagan Falls, Okanagan Falls to Penticton, Penticton to Kelowna, and then Kelowna to the end. And then each section would be a day. So instead of Naramata going front to back, and then restarting the day, you would simply go from left to right over the course. Now that's very mechanically similar to this game that's very thematically similar to us called Takedo, which is set in Japan. Because Japan, because it has six, uh, eight spots, then a day rest, then eight spots and a day rest. And we eventually went to Naramata, which I ended up liking because I like the idea of locking out locations and repeating the day. Now, if we were to do an Asoyus expansion or, or if we were to do a clone expansion, yeah, then absolutely. You could literally lay the boards out or as you finish the day, take this board out, put the other one in. So I think it's absolutely possible. And I think if we end up doing an Soyuz and uh, Napa and or Kelowna or, or Niagara expansions, you can have a variation of the rule where you, when you end the day, instead of repeating the day, you move that board out and you place another board down and you play it, you play the next day somewhere else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's absolutely doable. I think it would be a very unique feature. Um, so every day is going to be in a new region. That's right? awesome. <clears throat> um, there would definitely be altered rules because obviously because you're not repeating the day, the signature wineries don't have a, as much of a benefit. So we would play around with that. Hmm. That's cool. Very cool. So, yeah, um, and the other thing we also wanted to play with uh, with all of our expansion would be new characters, probably four or five new characters because we have a bunch of other vehicles that got designed. Uh, more options for uh, tourists and more upgrades. And we have a couple of other ideas we, we want to play with as well. What, uh, and so as far as like the, the tourists, because I know you've gotten a couple tourist pledges. How many did you, how many did you get? Well, if we were to go and take a look, because um, we can actually check the campaign, uh, we've got 14 backers for tourists. Wow. Uh, which is actually, yeah, which is pretty pretty solid number. I think it's, a, and, and remember, a lot of people don't uh, realize that uh, this, this we're not done with this for the long shot, because uh, the way the process works, obviously the campaign is going to end. We're going to celebrate Christmas and New Year's because it's going it's to take a week and have the two weeks for the uh, Kickstarter assets and the funds to come through. And it's probably going to be another week or so after that before we launch the pledge manager. And the pledge manager is going to give people the option who missed the campaign to back it again. It's going to allow people that have backed the campaign to adjust their pledge. So if it turns out you want to get an additional copy of the game, if you want to go for the tourist pledge, you still can. And if we end up cro uh, crossing a few uh, um, stretch goals from that amount, that'll be added into it. So maybe we'll, we, we will get the chance to add a couple of characters or more tourists and so forth. So there's going to be that option. So uh, even though we have 26 tourists, uh, there's uh, still on claim, there's still an option for people to uh, pick up more of these tourists. And then for the next month, we'll be designing those remaining tourists while uh, we design the box and we finish off these vehicle cards. Uh, so there's still going to be an option for people to um, get in on the game afterward. We'll probably run the pledge manager probably moments before we go to print. Nice. Right? Because we can go all the way basically to, to the end. Uh, and then when we hit print, and then that, that'll get locked. Although we, we might have to close off the tourist pledge early just because there's a certain point where we have to send all the final assets to China and go on from there. Nice. Very cool, man. Yeah. 
So that's excited. Eight minutes left. Eight minutes left in the game. Eight minutes left in the game. Who's going to score? <laughs> I was getting I was getting a backer every few minutes, and you popped on. So obviously everyone uh, <laughs> got scared when they saw your 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 face there, dude. I'm like I I I'm like I woke up and. And Candace is on the phone with somebody, and I'm like, seems pretty early for her to be on the phone with someone. And then I rolled over and I saw the time, and I'm like, oh my god, I totally slept in. But I mean, like, it's, it's uh, it's fun working for yourself, isn't it? Well, I actually I work for a company called Southern Glazers. <laughs> I know, but it's not like you 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 don't wake up, drive to work, and punch a clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, but I mean, like, and honestly, it's um. This like for for Glazers, it's like this is this is like the busiest time of year. So I was like literally yesterday, I was up at seven thirty, going to liquor stores and and uh, putting little gifts on bottles. So so I was just like it, it, I stayed up quite late last night too. So but oh, uh, wow. but I made it. Happy One of the through. things that uh, it's very interesting is that um, we've had, uh, well I have well, comparing it to my previous campaign of Ultra Modern Five. Uh, we have, um, let's see here, shockingly enough, 26 retailers that have come on board. Wow. Uh, that's crazy because I think if I were to go to Ultra Modern 5 and check it, I think I have five. Really? On the, on that campaign? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, because with uh, the thing, of, oh, there's two reasons for that, obviously. Uh, board games are much more uh, lucrative and much more all encompassing. There are more uh board game stores and they're all role-playing stores uh so that's one reason and i'm saying here uh, let me just check here how many but do that have? but that's uh like i've seen that um that game in probably more than that like obviously after the fact so there's the kickstarter but then after the fact you get people who are interested in coming on board or you go in and kind of sell it in and whatnot or yeah well i yeah so i've I, i've had just on my pledge on not, not on my pledge manager, but I can see that there were 15 backers that backed the retail pledge for Ultra Modern. So even though Naramata uh, has, has fewer backers, we have more retailers. And then when we when we when we run the pledge campaign, we're, um, the, the the pledge manager, we'll probably get a few more there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once we produce the game, it's going to go into distribution. Uh, some of them will go to Quartermaster. Some of them will go to hopefully Alliance or Universal. So a lot of local. Uh, game stores will be able to carry the game once that happens um doing a little things a little differently though we are going to be breaking the shipment so it's unlike ultra modern where all the product got shipped to florida and then we went off there we're going to be splitting up the shipment from china so that there's a whole bunch going to quartermaster but then we're going to be sending a bunch just directly to our hometown because um we have a lot of hometown backers and then part of our, our experience it hopefully uh, assuming that we can still travel and then and the world isn't quarantined uh, when the game hits us uh, sometime uh, you know in 2021 uh, hopefully mid, mid 2021 you and i were going to go to naramata to deliver the game and, and show mm -hmm. off it to all the wineries and of course when we do that we're crossing through several towns with game stores many of which have expressed interest in carrying the game so it's just easier to 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 have all that stuff and then deliver. So anyone who is anyone who's in, but who lives between Prince George and Penticton gets, can, can choose a local pickup option because we're going to be driving through those areas and dropping the game off. So it's a really great way for people who are local backers to uh, back the game. Cause uh, you get to save a good 20 bucks on shipping. Four minutes left in the game. Yeah. Also, if you're from Penticton, you get to pick up your game from meeples and milkshakes, which is uh, who are a big supporter and who are also on board the project as well. I just think it's like super fun. I know, um, I know like at least one backer um, that is not from like this region, right? Like they're, they're from uh, the U S and, and I mean, like if I'm them, I, and they've never been to Naramata, how cool is it to like, they'll get the game, they can play the game and then they can act actually go and like do the game in in a in a sense i mean like it's and i'm i'm like it's super super trippy to be part of a project like this it's awesome yeah yeah well, well it's interesting so i mean i'm not sure if how many interviews you've done i've done a few interviews with people and of course uh i am hitting the same sound bites the number of wineries i've visited in, in one week the number of vi wineries i visited in a day you know what are wineries i really really like and 
Um, it was interesting with people asking about the president. And some people, when they, when they play, uh, when they when they know board games, I go, "Hey, you played?" I was talking with a, a mutual chef friend of ours, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I play board games all the time." I'm like, "What board games?" "Oh, I play Monopoly and Risk." I go, "Dude, you really have to check out the new generation of board games. This is, it's 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 you know, there's a reason why when you go to Board Game Geek, the number one, uh, the, the 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 lowest rated board games of Board Game Geek are the games we grew up as a child, and so whenever I talk to people and they're like, oh yeah, this, so this is kind of like Monopoly. And I'm like, okay, let's talk about games. And you think back, there's, there's a dozen wine games in the market. I own three of them and there are almost all of them are about running a winery. And I, and, and then trying to explain to people like, this is something different. This is about tourism, which hasn't been done before. And so, and people were like, oh, so, and, and this is like a, a real region. And some people don't know, like, why is it called Naramata? And you think, well, there are board games that are based off of real regions. Ulm, Santorini, hell, technically Monopoly is set in the real location, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a precedent there as well. So it, it's, it's Naramata does follow thematically it's a, it's, a, it's a it follows a lot of long-standing traditions in board game design setting it in real locations making it thematically very very tight um and you know and and, and so some people have gone to carcassonne gone to santorini and taken photos of people playing those games in those locations that's and cool. you can and you can do that with naramata now as well yeah that's really really cool i dig it 99 seconds left Oh my God! Who's Come gonna on, get in there? That'd be super one, cool if somebody's watching right now and plugged in uh, like a down to the last second bid or pledge. Like, yeah, I'm waiting. We we had a few backers just before the end, so I'm hoping on, at 84 Come seconds on. we'll get one more backer. Come on, guys, one more on. backer. Somebody adjust your pledge for five bucks, and I'll just buy you a cup of coffee or something, a latte. Yeah. Come on, come on! I just want to see it move. Just like just because it's so exciting. It was it was it, it was moving at a pretty mean clip until you popped on. You are you are definitely a jinxer. I'm <laughs> gonna tell you that right that's now. That's like generally what happens. Come on, man. Yeah. And of course, people who are are, are curious, like I said, there's uh 60 we have seconds other... left. Yeah, I, I like how the Kickstarter thing turns red when that happens. Yeah. Can you imagine uh, if you actually hadn't reached your your goal and you're like, no, no. Well, like I said. If 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 it was uh, if it came down to um, <laughs> that kind of situation, we're like, oh my god, we're only down to thirty oh, seconds. Some, it, you, it just moved. Somebody somebody adjusted for three bucks. Yes, yes. Kazuhiro Honda has donated three dollars right before the end. That's amazing. Um, come on, somebody else, somebody else. You're gonna let him one up you? Come on, man. Oh, their ears is like faster than mine on you're literally like on the stream i'm looking at it versus my phone it's like one second ahead weird boom that's it boom that's it hey you did it 206 folks that's all right amazing there's going to be a lot of exploring wine country now that's what that means Yes, and then the emails popped up. You are successfully funded with 206 backers. So thank you, Honda, for getting in on the line. We we did get one just before the end. Awesome. So there we go. And that there you is go. well, uh, congratulations, buddy. Thank you, thank you. So uh, like I said, people who are following the campaign, just to be you know, enjoy your Christmas. Uh, and if you have that card, you can see that card on our campaign, see it on our Facebook page and grab, put that card off. If you want to give it to somebody, by the way, I'm glued to your backdrop. When did oh, yeah, you have like like red stripes like that? Uh, this is actually cadence and I switched rooms. So for people who are just watching cadence is my 11 year old daughter. Um, so this is like, it's pink. These are pink stripes. Um, look but, red, but we, uh, well, that's awesome. Uh, I mean, not that there's anything wrong with pink, but, um, we switched rooms because the office that I was in is a little bit bigger. Yeah. So now this is my office and Candace, uh, my wife was like, well, do you want to get it repainted? And I was like, you know what? I don't because the time that I'm on a, like a zoom or a stream or something like that, people are like, they want to talk about the, it's like a, it's a conversation piece. So plus I can like, I don't have it hooked up right now, but I have lights that are all like different colors. So that actually makes it look like it's, uh, um, like it'll change the way it looks because of the different color that it's lit in. Yeah. Awesome. 
Well, yeah. okay, man. I will I will let you go. We are done. So the as a people, um, the next big update is gonna be talking about the schedule and we'll talk about when the pledge manager is gonna go online. Hopefully we'll get that going. Uh the first thing we have to do, we have to get the information uploaded from the from from Kickstarter to uh CrowdOx, and then we'll build the uh the pledge manager page. And once that happens, uh then people can finalize their orders and we can move on to the next step. Awesome. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas to everyone and to you too as well, man. All right, buddy. You too. All right. You we'll take care. Have a good one. Yeah. So that is it for me as well. Um, I should have turned all on these lights here. This is this is Christmas time. Why haven't I turned on all these lights? Um, but I'll do that after the stream. So anyway, that is it. I am going to have a shave and a shower. <laughs> and that is it for the Neromatic Kickstarter. Thank you guys very, very much for tuning in. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. I'll get to them as soon as I can. Merry Christmas from DSX Machina, guys. Love you. Mean it.